Hello, welcome to module 12. This is part three. We're going to be talking about the home energy conservation heat transfer controls within small scale home use. This is home heating. So this is me creating uh, a warming system for the home, tapping into that 55 degree heat of the earth. You may have noticed that we skipped some slides. I'm going to make you self-responsible because they're self-explanatory. They're things like charts, just talking about the number of geothermal power plants, electrical generation power plants around the world and the United States. So the first thing we need to cover is HVAC systems. What you need to know about the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system units is that they are required in order to uh, have a geothermal hookup to your heat pump. So you have to have an HVAC. If you do not have this form of home heating and cooling system installed in your home, I cannot then go forward with a geothermal system. So that's step one. Here is the simple version of my heat pump, my condenser, my vent structure and ductwork. It's not a very good one as far as pictures go but it's getting to the point. One of the keys with geothermal is that I will be pulling about 55 degree temperatures through my line so that the exchanger will be pulling in something 55 degrees as opposed to whatever temperature it happens to be outside. And I can then heat on that 55 degrees. So when I'm pulling in the air, it's 55 and I can heat from there. So on a cold day like today, where it's only 33 degrees, I would be pulling in 33 degree air on a normal HVAC system. And then I would be heating it up to the 70 degrees I keep my home. On the other hand, if I have a geothermal system, I will be picking up 55 or 50 degree temperatures. And then I will be heating it the additional 30, 20, 30 degrees up to my 70 degrees that I want to keep my home. So there is an advantage to this geothermal system. It's the pictures from the book. They're not very good. Here is better. These are some color images just giving you the heat pump exchanger. This is just standard HVAC systems with my air handler and gas furnace. I would still keep my air handler, gas furnace, um, my air conditioning, cooling unit, I would still keep all that because I still want to be able to heat or cool based on my needs. Keyword, we've already done this way back early parts of the semester, but we've mentioned uh, a COP. This is the coefficient of performance and COP is, is basically an efficiency rating on my numbers. Same thing, pictures on my condensers as we go through. So now we're going to start talking about these geothermal systems that we're going to install. Now, once again, I'm going to, instead of being exchanging air from the atmosphere around me, I'm going to either be exchanging air or fluid from within heat lines that are punched into the earth that allows me to pull up something that's 55 degrees and then handle or heat from there. If I live on the West Coast, I might be able to not have to punch too deep into the earth, maybe 400 feet in and actually hit something that's very, very warm. And so I might be supplying all my heating. And uh, in that case, I might actually want to go shallow, but it's kind of nice because it works as a great air conditioning system. Even in our climate location, it can work as a really great air conditioning system. This picture gives you the, the four basic shape types, but I'm gonna go into them in greater detail. So talking about these basic heat types, this is a vertical base system, and this would be either a fluid line with antifreeze in it, or just an air exchange line. It can just be an air exchange line. Kind of depends on the product, who's installing and how and why. It's a plastic piping, so the piping will last forever as long as the line is not broken. And it's really just your heater exchanger furnace structure system that'll go. Those will die within 15 years-ish, so you have to keep up on those. But as far as the, the punching of my well systems and dropping in the lines to exchange my fluid or air within my system line to pull up that heat energy, those could, could last a lifetime. Most of them are guaranteed for at least 50 years, which is a nice guarantee. 
Um, so vertical line, I'm just punching in a vertical well bore and I'm dropping in my lines that I would be running my fluids into. Vertical lines don't need as much line, so I don't need to drop as much line as a horizontal line system. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some of these some of these images. Sorry. So this is a horizontal line system, and you can see they have my uh, furnace dropped in here from the basement here, and this is my heat pump exchanger, and this is a horizontal system. These are kind of nice because I can scrape down. I don't have to drop uh, very deep into the earth. I can just scrape down past the frost line of about 12 feet, maybe 15 feet, sometimes only eight feet, depending on location. And when I drop down there, I can then put in uh, my footage of line as I need. And one of the rules of thumb is based on tonnage is going to then equate to the amount of footage. And it's about 400 feet of line for each ton within my exchanger. So ex for example, I have a 2000 square foot home. I might have a 3.5 ton exchanger. And so I'm going to want about 15,000 feet of line on my system for my horizontal loop. A vertical loop system, I don't need nearly as much. I can do I can do with about 200. You can see even right here, it's 150 to 400 feet um, within my punch. And so I would only need about 150 to 400 feet of line that's going to drop down within that punch. Pond closed loop systems. Pond closed loop systems are tapping into something that is geothermal, so it's earth exchanged heat, but it's not utilizing the actual ground heat system. It's using the fact that water has its natural density variation where cold ice based water, ice floats and the liquid sinks. And so my warmer temperature water is actually down at the base of the pond in the winter months. And my cooler water in the summer months is actually down at the base of the pond. And so if I was to sink lines into the pond on my closed loop pond based system, I can actually tap into those natural temperatures within a pond. One of the downfalls of these systems is you have to have a pond that's deep enough that it doesn't freeze all the way down to the base of the pond within the winter months. It has to stay liquid below a frost line within the water. And I need to have a pond available that I own 100% because if I share that pond with any neighbor or anybody else, I have to then negotiate the rights to be able to put in a geothermal system. So there's, there's rules about these pond loops um, within it. With that said, there's one other structure set, and this is a coiled. A coiled loop structure is just uh, me coiling the loop itself to allow more footage without having to dig as deep. And this is most commonly utilized in horizontal and pond loop systems. You will pretty much never see it in a vertical loop system. I already talked about what type of capabilities these systems have. But some of the numbers have come back on these geothermal heat systems, and most of them in the cold winter months can take care of about 40% of your heating needs. And in the summer months, a lot of these systems take care of 100% of your cooling needs. Just talking about that sort of system, I already mentioned the length of pipe conversions. And uh, just talking a little bit more about these horizontal systems versus the slinky based ones. But this is really what I want to get to is some of these images. So this is a horizontal looping system. And this is a, a one that is coiled or slinkied within itself. And you can see these are three different examples of job sites that we did. Um, working on these geothermal line systems. And once again, these lines are then going to uh, attach to my exchanger system. Same thing with my vertical. Here's a vertical drop. And these are pond coils. And so this pond coil system will be weighted down and actually sunk, but this is it being moved to the center of the pond before we're about to go out there, weight it and sink the system. So on that note, I will pick up with one last video 
just to close up some of this information on geothermal, but it will be short.